Hi guys! Today we're going to make simple southern greens with smoked pork neck bone. So I'm going to go through the recipe. And this is very simple. I make this a lot. I'm going to use four bunches of collards. But the first thing we're going to do is get two gallons of water in a large stock pot. I have my frozen smoked pork neck bone. I pick the ones that have a lot of meat. And I'm going to go ahead and add those to my water. So I normally get probably about four, maybe three to four pounds if I'm going to make four bunches. So I'm, I'm going to make a lot of greens. I'm prepping them now for Thanksgiving, but I'm going to put them in the freezer. I'm just trying to get some of this food done ahead of time so I don't have to rush so much for Thanksgiving Day. So I'm just going to add all these to my pot. And the very first thing we do in this process is going to be to boil these down for about an hour and a half until they're tender. I'm going to go ahead and season my water. Um, so I use Reese's Seasoned Salt, just a little bit of crushed red pepper. And green seasoning. I don't use very much of this because it has a lot of the same ingredients that I'm already putting in here. And the main flavor is going to come from the smoked pork neck bone. Um, so that's where you're going to get your meaty flavor. So minced onion and um, garlic powder. And then I use... I use a Lowry seasoning. I'm not sure how to say this. I guess it's cas Cassetto. But I use this for everything. So I put that in there. And then we're going to let this come to a boil. And then I cover and just let it boil for about an hour and a half. And we'll check back on it once it's tender I'll strain them um, but this is the first step before I start cutting my greens or anything this is the first thing that I do so this can be boiling while I'm cutting my greens up um, and this is gonna be an all-day process so start early or do it the day before if you have a lot of other things that you need to cook um, this is definitely a labor of love so stir that up and cover it. So here are my bunches of greens. I went ahead and broke them off the, the bottom and I just take them one at a time and I cut the middle stalk out. And this goes really quickly as long as you have a sharp knife and a cutting board. You just lay them flat and you'll just cut the spine. Some people use scissors and I'm doing this to show you that it takes a lot more time to use scissors than it does to just use a sharp knife. So I'm just going to show you guys a couple of these on video. I'm not going to make you watch me do the whole thing. And then I'll come back once those are done. So for these little small bits that are on the inside of your bunch of greens, they're really crunchy. So I just take those and just break them apart. There's no sense in trying to get the stalk out of those because they're going to be really tender anyways. So now this is the technique I use to cut my greens and everybody probably has a different way to do this. But I'll take my leaves and I try to put a bigger leaf on the bottom. And I stack them up so it's kind of thick and then I'm gonna roll them up um, so I probably have about six or seven leaves it's up to you however so it's not hard for you to roll or cut I um, mean you'll kind of figure your own niche out once you're doing it so I just roll these up really tight because I don't want them to unravel I want them to be easy to cut through and then I just slice them kind of like you're just cutting spirals I slice them thin um, I kind of want them to look I guess like linguine about that thick but that's totally up to you how you want to cut them this is just my preference I like the way they cook better and to me they're just a little easier to eat when they're like this so I'll do this to all of them and then I will come back and show you guys my cleaning process I haven't cleaned them at all at this point 
I'm just cutting them and I like to cut them all and, and clean them next so I'll come back and show you guys that step So here's all the greens, I'm done shredding them. And so now we're gonna get ready to clean them. This is what they should look like. And now we're gonna do our salt water rinse and let them soak. So just make sure your sink is really clean. And I do warm water. Um, so I start with really hot water at first actually, and then I just turn the cold water on towards the end. Um, that's just a personal preference. It doesn't make a difference, I don't think. So I'm gonna add all my shredded greens in now I let these soak for a while uh, probably 30 or 45 minutes um, just to make sure they're clean and rinsed off and I'll come through and and agitate them once they're in the water for a while and I'll make a few trips back in the kitchen just to move them around and make sure any dirt or anything that might be in them will settle to the bottom so right now I'm over in the cabinet looking for salt uh, but I'm gonna put uh, just some regular Morton's table salt in here um, and this is a step you don't have to do I just do this because I like I think the coarseness of the salt kind of helps me clean the leaves off a little bit um, so and all of this is gonna get rinsed off and rinsed down the drain but this is just a step that I take just to help me clean my greens a little bit better and so I'll let you finish watching me do this. I'm just st stirring them up and I'll come back for the next step. Okay, so now it's time to do the final rinse. I'm gonna move them over to my clean, my clean pan, and then I'm gonna transport them over to the, the water when, when that time is ready. But right now I'm just doing the final rinse and moving them out of the water so I can clean this part of the sink out. Um, the next thing we're gonna do is pull the neck bone. They should be tender by now. I'm gonna pull those and let them cool off and then I'll, I like to take the bones, I debone my neck bone just because it's easier for me and my family to eat greens without having to pick the bones out. Again, that's a personal preference. Um, it takes a lot more time to do that. So that's the step I'm gonna do next and I'm just taking the greens out right now and getting them ready to go over to the liquid once I get the neck bone out of the pot. Okay, so I've got the sink cleaned out and I got my neck bones pulled out and now I'm going to strain the liquid. I'm going to use the liquid, of course, to cook the greens in, but I want to strain it because bone pieces or anything like that could go back in the bottom of the pot and I want to make sure I get all of that out before, before I put the greens in. I don't want there to be any bones or any pieces and so you can see a lot of stuff settle in the bottom of the pot right there. I'm actually gonna add water to the pot and just rinse it around so I can get all of that debris out of the bottom and then I'm gonna go back over to the stove and I've got my stove on high so I'll be able to bring that back to a bowl but I'm adding all my greens in now now your greens there should be a lot less water than your greens that is going to boil down 
your greens are going to get you're probably going to lose about 50 percent of mass once you cook your greens um so don't overfill your greens with water or else you'll have soupy greens but again if you like them like that that's fine um but we don't like to have a whole lot of liquid in ours and they will cook down so i'm just adding all the greens here now and then i will cover this up and let it boil probably for about 45 minutes or so until everything is really tender um, but once i've got this covered i'm gonna go over once my neck bones are cooled and i'm gonna start picking those to get all the meat and the fat off the bones so i can add that back to my pot so just keep watching and i'll come back So now we're going to take apart the neck bone. They're really, really hot, so you may want to let them cool down. I'm just doing this right now to kind of show you how tender it needs to be. Normally boiling them for about an hour will make them this tender, but it should easily pull away from the bone. And it's it's going to be really hot right now, so this, this is very hot for me. And then... I let them cool and then I came back and I shredded them all up and this is this is what that should yield um, and if you see like I'll show you it's really tender it will just fall apart in your hand and then I'm gonna add this meat back to the pot and this is gonna continue to break down and just add to the flavor of the neck bone it's gonna be so delicious guys neck bone is probably the best tasting piece of meat on on pork on a pig um, it's our absolute favorite so now I'm gonna stir these up before I add the meat in there just because um, you don't want the bottom to overcook and then the top not so make sure you're definitely um, you're stirring these up and you can see how much the greens have reduced since everything started boiling and has been in here um, but just make sure you're periodically stirring these you don't want them to cook unevenly and then I'm gonna add all my meat back in here and I'll push that around and push some of it to the bottom and just stir that around too because you want this to continue to break down even though it's already tender um, there's a lot of fat in this meat so you want that to be able to break all the way down and then I'm just gonna cover this up and let it sit for about 45 minutes we'll cook it for about 45 more minutes and then I'll show you the final result when it's all done. So here it is, guys. This is smoked neck bone and collard greens. The simple way, not the fast way, but it is simple. Um, and it is so worth it. Everybody is going to love these. And this is also in my cookbook. Um, it's called Comfort Food for the Soul, and you can find that book on Barnes & Noble. Uh, my name is Jessica K. Williams, so you can look that up. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you want to see any other videos from me, just let me know in the comments.